Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to touch on the touchy subject around multi-boxing because it ends up being a hot topic that gets discussed pretty often, especially with Diablo 4 coming around the corner. I saw some different topics on Reddit and on the Blizzard forums, uh, people yelling at each other about multi-boxing and stuff. So I'm going to give you some context as to what multi-boxing is if you're newer to the Diablo community, and then we'll talk about how to do it legally, how to do it wrongfully, what should be banned what shouldn't be banned then i will give you my perspective on all of that so let's get into it Alrighty, so what you're seeing here is actually footage of my personal setup, and this was probably, geez, at this point, probably five years ago, something like that. Uh, this was my main setup where I had the the main account that I played on, and then I had uh, a side account and then another side account uh, for my two alt accounts playing at the same time. You can see there uh, in, in the same party playing Diablo 3 together, and this is what a computer setup would look like when... And I'm playing at night and I've got my three accounts open playing Diablo 3. So I was in the best hardcore clan in Diablo 3. We were pushing leaderboards and, and playing like crazy and stuff like that in hardcore mode back in the day. And I actually owned four different accounts. This one right here shows me playing three, but there was some instances where I would have four up at a time. And the way I would do it is I would have my main account right here on the main monitor. And then I would use this monitor as a free monitor to like surf the internet or whatever. And then over here, I would go like one, two, three. I would put like my three accounts in, in little windows right here. And, uh, and that's how I would do it for my one, two, three, four, when I was using all four accounts, but right here, uh, this was a common way that I did it just because it was nice and clean. I don't have four monitors, but it was nice to just have a, a dedicated monitor for each account and play that way. So what you're seeing right here is multi-instancing, which is different than multi-boxing. And I think a lot of people get those two things confused. Multi-boxing is when you've got a bunch of accounts stacked on top of each other. So like when you left click, four characters move off of that one left click. That's multi-boxing. Multi-instancing is when you actually control all of the accounts completely separate of one another. And that's what I was doing right here. I would literally do this live on stream. It's not bannable to play multiple accounts when you're actually physically controlling them with a human being. Now, if you start involving macros and bots and stuff like that to emulate one action to control four things, that's when it would be against the terms of service. Now, the main reason that multi-instancing is not against the terms of service is because it's physically impossible to police it. Like, let's say they make this illegal. Like, you can't have any alt accounts. You can only play your main account and they are going to police that and enforce that. Okay, what if I get a laptop on my desk and I have a completely separate computer with a completely separate account and I have myself as a human being individually playing both accounts? How can you police that? You, you'd basically have to say like roommates can't play together, spouses can't play together. It'd be two completely different machines playing two different accounts and human beings playing both of them. So that's why I say it's really impossible to outlaw that, but there is probably some way to detect multiple accounts doing the exact same mouse click off of one action. And that I am against. Any sort of third party automation to turn one player into four players, basically, that would and should be against the rules. So hopefully that clarifies some of the differences around multi-boxing and what it is compared to multi-instancing. And then the way that I would do this back in the Diablo three days was I would have my main account where I would actually clear everything and then I would alt tab, go over to my other account and I would bring my alt accounts into the fight when I got to the boss and then I would just nuke the boss down with my with my main account. So obviously you can't do super difficult content. You can't like push rank one uh, on the leaderboard with multiple accounts. It's, it's not possible when you're actually playing them all. Uh, I would just do it for like farming content and trying to farm as many legendaries per hour that I could funnel to my main account. And you know, so like back in Diablo three, they had challenge rifts. I would just leave my alt accounts at the door. Uh, when the, when the rift started, I would clear it with my main account. And then when I kill the boss, I would teleport my alt accounts to my main 
main account and then boom you're getting like 3x or 4x the loot and then you have to go through all the inventories of your alt accounts when they fill up see what's worth keeping salvage the rest and then drop the ones that are worth uh porting on over to your main account because in diablo 3 you could actually share items as long as you were in the game when they dropped you couldn't just uh like bring clan mates in if you found something good and then give them something like no if they had to actually be in the game present when the item dropped so it, it was a lot of hard work i had to actually build all of these champions because they had to farm like greater rift keys and stuff like that so it was a lot to manage it was a lot of effort to to build four characters that are viable every single season because uh, in Diablo 3, they had seasons, and you can see it says uh, hardcore seasonal right there. So not only was it seasonal, but it was hardcore. And there was a lot of instances where you, you, you're trying to play all these accounts, and things get lost in the wash, and, and things are going crazy on screen. And you're like, wait, I meant to select that account. Damn it. And I like my alt account would die. It's hardcore. And then I would have to go re-level up a new character, power level them, rebuild them, gear them up, feed gear to them. And uh, it, it was a lot of hard work but it was worth it if you could manage it and get it rolling because obviously uh, when you're able to farm greater rifts and get three or four X the loot towards your main, that is a lot of legendaries per hour. I was getting up to, and when I had it, when I had it fully rolling and things were going well, I could be at around like 150 to 200 legendaries per hour <laughs> feeding into my main, which if you're only a Diablo Immortal player, that would sound pretty crazy. But loot was way different in Diablo 3. It would basically rain legendaries. Um, and what you were looking for was the ancient legendaries. So in Diablo 3, you would have a normal legendary. And then on top of that, 10% uh, of legendaries would be ancient. So that was the real grind, was getting these ancient legendaries, which I really like that as a system because you can build a character fast. You can get the legendaries you need and you can actually get your build up and rolling, but the real grind becomes getting every single slot to be the higher stat and better version, which is the ancient legendaries, and it's only 10% of the drops. So to get the specific items you need to be ancient and roll well was quite the grind. And I kind of liked how that how that structure ended up working out. It was a lot of fun. It was pretty hype when you saw an ancient legendary drop because only one out of 10 legendaries were an ancient. So the whole system just ended up functioning way different than a Diablo Immortal. And I would say 150 legendaries an hour in a Diablo 3 was probably equal to like, I don't know, 10 legendaries an hour in Diablo Immortal. Like, like, like insanely good. Uh, you know, most of the times I probably average over the course of a long sample size like two or three legendaries an hour in Diablo Immortal. So yeah, if you had like, if you were playing three or four accounts efficiently, you could expect to be around 10, somewhere around there. So yeah, I'd say the 150 was pretty close to about 10 on Diablo Immortal if you're looking for a comparison, because I know a lot of you here on the channel are subbed because of Diablo Immortal. So yeah, I just want to do, have a discussion about the multi-boxing and multi-instancing with Diablo 4 around the corner and seeing a lot of people discussing it, a lot of people confused about what it is and all that type of stuff. I just wanted to be transparent with you and talk about what it actually is and, and, and kind of how it functions compared to these Diablo games and what we can expect in Diablo 4. I expect that it's going to be allowed to do multi-instancing because, I mean, you are purchasing four accounts and personally controlling each one of them you can't really stop people from doing that um even if you like i said I, I already explained it but like i said people will just have multiple computers then if you say like you can't do it on one pc and they'll literally like stand up and go to a different computer and control it like th there's really no way to uh to, to to like go against that it's mostly mostly people have a problem with the automation when it comes to you you've got you've got four characters stacked on top of each other and you're moving them around killing stuff in perfect unison with one click controlling all four that that's what people tend to have the biggest problem with. But uh, as always, let me know what you think down below. I would love to hear your opinions and, and your perspectives as well. So remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Diablo content coming your way. I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.